Welcome back to the channel. I am here on the Fiori Launchpad and to manage our customer line items, we will navigate to Manage Customer Line Items. Click on this application and here you can see the start screen to manage our customer line items. First of all, we have a section over here where we can search by different filter criteria. So we can insert a customer number, the company code or even company codes and then we can select a status. So whether we want to display the open items, the items that were already cleared or all items. Let's say all items for now. Then we must choose the posting date. Right now it's set to the beginning of the fiscal year up until the current date. However, we can for sure select the deviating date via this button or even just type in the dates in this area. Then we have the item type. So right now it's set to normal items. However, we can also say that we want to display special GL transactions like down payments, noted items, which basically serve as reminders or notifications about special transactions or events in our system, but do not have a direct impact on our financial balances. We can also include parked items, so items where we inserted a bunch of information but did not post the information yet. And we can even select supplier items if the customer we are interacting with is also our supplier. For now I will leave it like that. Then we can click on go and the system displays all the items according to our filter criteria. By the way, we can always save our filter criteria by clicking on this button, click on save as, then just give it a name, custom view, you can set it as default so that the filters will be defaulted the next time. We can even save it as public so that other people can also participate and save this filter as their favorite. And apply automatically means that not even the filters will be displayed over here, but also it is as if the system would hit on the go indicator. Okay, I will click cancel for now. Then as I said before, the items are being displayed in the table structure. All the information that is highlighted here in blue is information we can click on. So you can click on the customer number and then you can directly jump into other applications like the management of our customers or displaying our customer balances. The same also counts for the company code as you can see over here. Then there is a quite important column displaying the clearing status. As I always tell you, from time to time it's a good advice to click on this icon over here to display more information about certain indicators. If we hover over the clearing status question mark, then you can see here that despite this symbol over here, which counts for open items, which are not cleared yet, we can also have this credetic form in green for cleared items or even this triangle for parked items. And also it's quite important to inspect the dependencies over here. So depending on our authorization, we are also allowed to select a customer number you can see over here and directly create a clearing. Okay, let me close this view. Then you can see the journal entry date and even the journal entry itself. Over here we can click on the number again and directly jump into the respective journal entry via this link. And then we are forwarded to the specific journal entry with all its information including the general data as well as the line items. By the way, I explained you this application in another video. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Then you can see here the journal entry type. So the document type our journal entry was posted with. And if we scroll further to the right, some of the journal entries will be marked with a special GL indicator. If we have a special general ledger transaction, then you can see there's another column displaying if our line items are due. Also here it makes sense to display the search help again and then hover over the question mark and you can see the different symbols for item is overdue, item is not overdue or if the item is due. Whether the item is due for sure depends on the payment terms and also the baseline date we entered in our document before. Let's close this and this as well. Then you can see the amounts and also if a follow on document, so a clearing journal entry already exists, you would see a number over here. Let me just scroll down a bit. Here you can see the clearing documents that were generated. So far so good. We can always select one of the items and then we can perform various other functionalities. So we can click on edit line items to edit the line item for this journal entry. Here we can adjust certain information like payment data, dunning data and so on. But this also depends on your system configuration and on the document change rules. By the way, I explained you the document change rules also in another video of mine. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. For now we will say cancel. We can create a correspondence. So let's click on this one. Here we choose the company code and the correspondence type. So for instance, we can state customer invoice for the journal entry. And if we click on PDF preview, we can inspect the invoice document. And from here, we can also send it via mail or print it if necessary. 
Let's go back. We can also block our journal entry for Dunning via this button so that this journal entry will not be subject to our Dunning run. Here we provide a reason why it's blocked and then we would just click on OK. Also via this button we could unblock the journal entry for Dunning so that the customer with this particular journal entry can be done again. Furthermore, we can block our open item for payment via this indicator. We need to provide a reason. Let's just say manual payment block, test block, like that. Click on OK. And that's basically it. Now you may ask yourself where you can find the information whether one of those line items here is blocked for payment. We can simply click on this symbol over here, then search for block. And then we select item payment block, click on OK. And if we now scroll further to the right, we can see that for this particular item, a payment block was set. We can also unlock for payment via this button and then the payment block vanished. As you've seen before, I was able to adjust the appearance of this table. So either by this button and then selecting other columns I want to be displayed or columns I want to be hidden. Also, we can drag and drop like that to change the arrangement of the columns. And please be aware that to save your table over here, you need to select this button and then click on save as and here you can save the table as well. You can set it as default and make it public. So keep in mind that this arrow here counts for the filter criteria and this one over here counts for the detailed screen. Last but not least, there are those three dots over here. You can export the current selection, so the current table you see over here, as an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. There are just some functionalities left I did not explain yet. We can also click on this arrow so that only the table is being displayed. We can view change logs via this button to check all the changes done to our items, show the filters again like that, and quite importantly, also send the current screen via mail to your colleague so that he or she can click on the link and will directly see what you are seeing right now or even save the current screen as an own tile. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.